Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a virtual server or port forwarding for a TP-Link MR6400. This is what it looks like. Uh, this is what the router looks like. All right, so the first thing you need to do is log into the router in order to make these settings. In order to log into the router, you need the router's IP address. If you know the router's IP address, you can put it straight into the web browser just like that. As you can see, 10.0.0.2. Now, if you are not sure about the router's IP address, it's quite easy. You just say CMD and then you'll type IP config and then you'll see the gateway. You see where it says default gateway? Well, that's telling me the IP address of the router. The router is the device which is giving you access to the internet. So there it says 10.0.0.2. Another way to check it is you can go to your network settings, double click on it, properties, internet, and there you can see it actually says here default gateway 10.0.0.2 all right so you use that address you copy and paste it into your web browser 10.0.0.2 and now you need to be able to log in to router which means you need the uh, username and password now once you've logged into the router all you need to do is you go over here into the advanced section on the left hand side you'll see some tabs here we've got network and NAT forwarding. NAT stands for Network Address Translation. So I'm going to click on the NAT and there you will see the virtual server option and port triggering as well as the DMZ. So what I'm going to be using is the virtual server. I click on that and now you can see I've already set up some virtual servers. I'll delete these so long and I will go through it step by step with you. Right, what you want to do is you want to say add. Now the interface, because this is an LTE router and I'm using it via LTE, so I'll leave that as is. The service type, well you can call it whatever you want. So if it's a camera server or maybe it's a remote desktop. So in my case, I'm going to call it an NVR because it is a camera server. Now you need the port of this camera server. Where do you get this information? So for, for this installation, I'm using a camera server, I already know the ports, so I'll just show you what a camera server's uh, network settings look like. So for example, here is a camera server, you can see there's the IP address and there are some ports. It's in the server when you log in, it tells you the TCP port and maybe you want to do the UDP and then there's some mobile ports. So I'm just showing you that different protocols require different ports. So for this particular one, I'm going to say the port number is 3777. Where did I get that from? Well, that's the server that I'm trying to connect to. And this happens to be a camera server, right? The internal IP address. So that is the IP address of the server that you want to be able to connect to once your packet reaches the router. The point of the virtual server is that you are able to connect to a local server while you are in a remote location. For example, you might be sitting on the beach in Mauritius or maybe you are on a glacier on your holiday and you're doing your ski trip and then you need to log into a server but your camera server is in a different country or in a totally different place so you are logging in remotely you're not on the network and that is the point of the virtual server so you need to have the port number and there i put it and then you need the internal ip address this is the ip address of the server that is sitting on that local network so in this case it happens to be 10.0.0.250 so this is the IP address of that server. For example, if I go to uh, on my local network, you see there I've got 10.0.0.250. Can you see how it brings me the splash screen of this camera server? This camera server happens to be a Dawa camera server. So there you can see this is the local address. If you try and type in 10.0.0.250 remotely, you're going to get nothing. That's not going to help you. So we need to translate the address. And that's why we're calling this a NAT option. Okay, so the internal port, it's going to be the same. And now you just want to choose the protocol. Now, different servers require different protocols. TCP is a reliable protocol, while UDP is kind of a best effort, often a streaming protocol. So it depends on the application, and you could put both. It's up to you. You can also do trial and error, right? So then you say save. And there you go. You've actually now created a virtual server on your local network that any packet that is coming from the outside world looking for port 3777 will be forwarded, see there, NAT forwarding, it will forward that remote packet 
into your internal network through your router and it'll go to the server 10.0.0.250 for you to connect to the local server. But there's one more step you need to do. In order for this to work, you need to know the router's public IP address. Now, now right now, you could have a look at your IP address. Now, here I have a uh, little network and you can see there, there is an IP address. You can see it says there 102.254.25.77. So that is my public IP address right now. What is a public IP address? It's the address that the outside world can see. So if you try and locate me on the network and maybe you do a port scan, you will actually find that my router is available on 102.254.25.77 at port 3777. That is an open port because that's what you've actually done. You've created a virtual server, which means the router is able to accept incoming queries on this IP address. However, on the port 3777. Now, the only problem is, is this IP address changes. It's not going to be the same IP address every time. For example, tomorrow when you restart your router or uh, later if there's an update, you'll find this changes. So what we need to do is go and get you a dynamic DNS address. What that is, it's kind of a placeholder address for you because the public IP address of your router keeps changing. You need to go and get a dynamic DNS address. So there are many options for you available. For example, you can go and uh, rent a DDNS address from Dynamic DNS. And there you can see it says hostname.dyndns.org. That is this company's uh, domain. You can choose uh, from a variety of ones they've got. And you could also do a free one at noip.com. Now, do you see the name it says no IP? Right, because this IP address keeps changing, you would have to keep checking in to your router to find out what the IP address is in order to log in. So the dynamic DNS, what it does is that kind of acts as a placeholder for you. So what happens is you can go and register at noip.com and you can get a name and it will be whatever you want to whatever you want to try and register. So let's call it Johnson uh, 1982 and there it's at Let's do the noip.co, the ddns.net. Can you see that this is available? Johnson1982.ddns. So you can sign up, you can register. And what happens is once you've signed up, they go and allocate you this DDNS address and they map it to your IP address. When your router's IP address keeps changing, it's not a problem anymore because you are going to reuse this address as your address. DDNS and what will happen is no IP will then point all incoming traffic to the correct IP address i.e. your router right so you'll need to register this so imagine you've done it and now you own Johnson 1982 at DDNS.net during the registration it will locate your IP address and it will map the IP address of 102.254.25.77 to this DNS address. Tomorrow when the, your IP address changes from 102.254.255.77 to something else, it's not a problem because anybody looking for that camera server, you just need to log in via this DDNS address. So on the router, you need to set that up. So let's go and do that. You go to advanced and then you go to network. And then do you see here it says dynamic DNS. So here on the TP link, it's pretty cool because it already has a setting for no IP or dynamic DNS. And it even takes you to the registration page of dynamic DNS if you don't have your own DDNS address. The so username and password is the username and password which you chose when you set up your account. Can you see it asks you for a username and password? This is your DDNS address, johnson1982.ddns. So what will happen is you need to create your username and password. Maybe your username and password is also Johnson, um, but you'll choose something else, 555, and your password is uh, whatever. Okay, and then the domain name is the name which you have registered with noip.com, which happened to be Johnson. 
www.ddns.net. Well, so what happens is you need to log in. Once you log in, you're linking your router with noip.com and, and the router will keep updating the IP address. So that is a very good feature because some of you may have had this problem in the past where the uh, no IP, IP address does not update and you have to download the update client tool. Well, you don't need to do that with this TP-Link router because the interface here on the router does it automatically. So you set this up just like that and then you say save. Then it will log in and unfortunately it's not going to work here because uh, I made this as fictitious. This is a fictitious username and password. All right, so all that's, that's all you would need to do. Your username, password, your domain name and your virtual server and you're done. Now you can log into this virtual server having set it up as I've just showed you. Just one more thing, if you're finding that your public IP address is not being updated to your DDNS server, for example, here is my current public IP address and what I noticed is noip.com still had my previous IP address so it wasn't being updated fast enough. Now even though I did do the setup, uh, what I noticed is the TP-Link router is not updating at the rate which my IP address is changing. There is a workaround for this. If you go to advanced system tools and it says reboot. Now what happens is when the TP-Link router reboots, it also goes and re-registers your public IP address at your DDNS service provider. So what I've done is I've selected the reboot schedule and I've enabled it and I've chosen a time when the internet, when I'm not using the internet that often. You can see it's at 4 a.m. in the morning and I've asked it to repeat or to reboot every day. You see, you've got some options here every week, every month. Now, my public IP address changes constantly. Uh, it's changing at least once a day. So in order for me to deal with this, I've just set a reboot option. Now, there is another more accurate way, and that is to download a tool from noip.com's website to constantly update the uh, noip servers of your public IP address. That tool is shown in another video that I have but unfortunately that will have to run on a computer so there has to be a computer on your local network sending your public IP address to your DDNS so if it's a camera server or something like that it won't work it'll have to be a Linux Windows or Apple machine all right so this is the workaround that I'm showing you and uh, thanks for watching cheers